Hello everyone, this is Abir from Digital of Things. I have with me today Brooke, who is the COO and the co-founder of Digital of Things. And I've got with me today Emmy, who is the product manager at Creative 971. Uh, we have an interesting topic to discuss today. We're going to talk about content. And as we all know, content is king. And as marketeers, we all agree that how it is drafted and created mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So would you be able to shed some light on the difference between content copywriting and UX content? Sure. Um, now, a lot of people get a bit confused between copywriting and uh, UX uh, writing. The difference between both of them, let's say you can think of a copywriting text as if you are um, encouraging the customer to purchase the item, so you are selling your product. Mm -hmm. However, UX writing is totally different. It is in the process why the customer is purchasing the item. So let's say the error messages that appears or uh, the four or four page, the text that is mentioned in there, it should be very short and uh, straight to the point as well. And it should guide the customer um, without making the customer feeling lost during the process. So it's basically you need to think of copywriting as if it is for the business approach, but user experience writing is for the customer and consumer. Yeah. Anything to add to I that? Think, I think Emmy sums that up quite nicely. <laughs> I think the way that uh, we always say that copywriting is for a business sure. uh, and, and UX writing is for the customer. So you need to think about that. And there's a lot, of, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. I think mm -hmm. that uh, when it comes to, to copywriting, you can be a lot more creative. Sure. And when it comes to UX, you want to be a lot more succinct and, and really focus on the end user. And do you think we can complement it within the market? How, how, how does it go hand in hand with the marketing efforts? How does it complement it? Uh, so I would say that you've obviously got a website or you've got an app, you've got um, offline touch points as well. There are so many different touch points that the customers see. When you're actually establishing a brand, you need to establish a tone of voice for that brand. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be a synergy between the two. You don't want it to be completely disjointed between the online experience and your UX copy compared to your advertising or your marketing. Sure copy and content. So there still needs to be an alignment between the two. I think where it comes to marketing and advertising, you've got the opportunity to be a bit more creative, mm -hmm. uh, but you do need to be mindful when you're actually designing an experience that customers are using, whether it's your website, whether it's uh, your mobile app, it's a digital screen in store. Mm -hmm. You need to think about the space or the real estate that you have and being able to get that customer to achieve their end goal as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So. There's, uh, there's those differences there. But at the end of the day, the, the tone of voice mm -hmm. should still align. True. Mm -hmm. And if we were to say, at what stage should this content be actually drafted? Okay, so speaking of the user experience content, basically we as Creative 971, we start thinking of it during the design phase, mm -hmm. not after the development phase. The reason for this is because during the design phase, the user, uh, user experience content will let us as a designers or let's say while designing the actual website for the customer for the client, you know the length of the text, how, mm -hmm. how long it will take. If you're using Lauren Epson, first of all, it doesn't give you that touch and feel of the website and the brand identity as well. So including it during the design phase is really helpful while designing the website to make sure that the design process aligns with the text, with mm -hmm. the width of the text that you're going to add. It as well gives you some ideas while designing the website, so it should be considered in the design phase mm -hmm. and not after that. Mm. Definitely should be considered during the de design phase. Some would even argue that you should have take a content first approach sure. and you should actually write the content before you even start the design so that the content can mm -hmm. guide the design. Yeah. It really depends what your uh, end goal is and the objectives is uh, at the end of the day. So yeah, there's, there's different schools of thought around that and sure. I think you could argue for and against both sides. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a couple of options, mm -hmm. but definitely not in the development stage. Yeah. Because it may, it may mess up the template, even let's say if you're designing a page which consists of three lines of content, but actually when you're developing it and implementing the content on the website, if it takes longer, then you're messing up, you're messing up the template of the mm -hmm. page and hence it's affecting the design of the website. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, <laughs> If I want to ask, how frequently should we actually update this content? Every, every how, like every when do we need to look at it? 
Does it need to be refreshed? Is there any mm -hmm. rule in place? I know there's no hard rules usually mm -hmm. in each business. And sure, it, it actually depends, but we do recommend or suggest that users or clients should update it as often as they can. So they are having, mm -hmm. so you're having several points to consider the restructuring your website, updating the content and redesigning their website as well. It depends on the customer needs. It depends if you are going to feature a new collection or a new product, let's say, that you need to update, of course, your content as well to highlight your collection more. Let's say if there's a new topic happening around the world, let's take as an example the COVID-19 now. First of all, all of the websites starting beginning from the COVID-19 situation, they had to implement new content in the website. People started to think in a different way, so even yet the UX content should be changed. Mm -hmm. So this is a time where a lot of clients or business owners should actually think of changing the uh, user experience content. Um, if you're having any new marketing campaign as well, so mm -hmm. it actually depends mm -hmm. on what is happening around the world. Uh, let's say we would recommend if a business owner would update the full website every now and then because you need to be up to the trends, you know. Mm -hmm. In e-commerce, e everything is very diverse. Uh, every now and then you're having new approaches that is appearing and new things that comes into the, uh, into the line, so you need to be up to the point as well. Mm -hmm. I'd say that, um, I mean, you've touched on a really good point because if you take a typical homepage, for example, you've got your marketing real estate mm -hmm. and obviously that's very heavy on new campaigns, new product releases, and that's something that you'll continually update on a regular basis. One thing that you might not update as regularly is the microcopy, your error messages, your call to action buttons. If that's working and there's, a, there's no need to change from shop now to browse now or yeah. whatever it might be. Um, but obviously, depending on trends, depending on what's happening in, in the industry, you want to keep the content fresh because you want your customers to keep coming back to the website. And if, particularly if it's a content heavy website, uh, you need to make sure that there's a reason for your customers to, to repeat and revisit. Um, otherwise, they're just going to, they'll read it once, they'll come back a second time, they'll read the same content. They've got no reason to get more new information. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very important to keep that web page, that website fresh, the app, anything that you're doing, you want to make sure that you're constantly feeding your customers new information, but just be mindful of whether or not you should need to change that micro copy sure. regularly, is what I'd say. It's all today with you. Yeah. Thank you so much ladies, this has been lovely. If you have any questions or you'd like to know more about any specific topic, feel free to leave us a comment and make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.